Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In this video, I answer a question from one of our listeners who asked, how many years of experience do I need to take the PE exam? This Pass the PE Exam video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass, or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. Typically, in many U.S. states, the experience requirement to apply for your PE license is four years of qualifying engineering experience. However, each state acts independently to set its own education experience and residency requirements. Therefore, there is variation throughout the United States. It is generally required that all candidates' experience be accumulated after graduation from an accredited school. If you have worked while attending school, and if the work fits the criteria for qualifying engineering experience, you may qualify to take the examination in less than four years after graduation. However, depending on circumstances, it may be difficult for you to demonstrate that the pre-graduation experience constitutes true engineering experience. If you are not a graduate of an accredited four-year engineering program, you will usually need more than four years of qualifying engineering experience, often eight to 12 years, depending on the nature of your education, in order to be eligible for engineering licensure. And some states will not permit non-graduates to take the FE exam, no matter how much experience they have. Each state engineering licensure board can provide the information on the number of years of experience, if any, that may be substituted for each year of education. Let's look at Texas as an example. An engineer with an accredited engineering degree must have a minimum of four years of active practice in engineering work of a character satisfactory to the board, indicating that you are competent to be placed in responsible charge of such work. With a non-accredited degree, you must have a minimum of eight years of the same type of work required of those candidates with an accredited engineering degree. Many states allow for successful completion of graduate study leading to a master's degree or doctorate degree in engineering to provide for credit toward engineering experience with one year typically credited for a master's degree and two years total for a doctorate degree which includes the one year for a master's degree. Some state laws even permit the waiving of the FE examination for individuals in academia with doctorates. One last point I want to cover here. While I have said that typically U.S. states require four years of qualifying engineering experience or three years plus your graduate degree to sit for the PE exam, some states will allow you to take the PE exam prior to obtaining this experience. However, in this scenario, even if you pass the PE exam, you cannot get your license until you have obtained the necessary experience. For example, in New York, which is where I have my PE license, you cannot be accepted to sit for the PE exam until you have obtained the qualifying engineering experience. However, some states like Texas have decoupled the PE exam from the qualifying engineering experience. So in Texas, since May of 2016, one is allowed to take the PE exam as soon as they achieve their EIT, assuming their application is accepted and then they can seek the needed experience afterwards. But again, they will not be granted a PE license until they have both passed the exam and obtained the necessary experience. You can find a link in the video description explaining this further. 
Please remember to check with your state engineering licensure board for more specific information related to your state's requirements. You can visit nspe.org forward slash resources forward slash licensure forward slash licensing dash boards to find links to all of the state licensing boards. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will be published weekly. So be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below this video. I will read and respond to you in future videos. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a problem you need help solving. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.